Over a year and a half ago now, back in August of 2022, I made a video ranking every Rob Top level in the game. And I figured it's time for a revision, you know, it's been long enough, a lot of my opinions have changed. Plus, with the release of 2.2, we now have Dash added to this list, as well as the tower levels if you want to include those. So yeah, I'm very excited to get into things. Uh, let's just kick things off with Stereo Madness. I'm going to play each level, talk about it a little bit, and then rank it. Not much to say about this level, really. At least it hasn't been said in like all of my other videos where I play this level. I considered skipping this one and going straight to the rankings, but then there'd be an army of people with pitchforks and torches outside my house. Now, disclaimer, I love all of these levels for their own reasons, but at the same time, they're not all created equal. So I don't hate any of these levels, but I do have a least favorite and you're going to have to deal with that. <laughs> Nothing really wrong with Stereo Madness. Everything's super rudimentary, so it's kind of hard to judge it. Now, I'm going to reluctantly put this in A. I'm going to try to judge each level fairly based on when they came out. Uh, perhaps some gripes I have with the level that would maybe keep it out of S tier would be that the third coin is super hidden compared to the other two. And maybe those two triple spikes make the gameplay a little imbalanced, but I don't really care that much. For what we had at the time, this is a great level. I might move it down to B later. We'll see. Back on track, the first meme of the game. <laughs> Back on track, introduce jump pads for the first time, including blue jump pads. Not everybody knows that, but one blue jump pad was used in this level for the sake of the first coin. This level's gameplay, I think, is a huge step up from Stereo Madness. The level's like, hey, you remember jumping from last level? What if it was cooler? Stereo Madness' song is also, like, really, really simple, which isn't a bad thing. It's very good at what it does, but I definitely like this song better. Back on track, a great little level. The first coin is, like, fairly hidden, but I don't much care. I think the gameplay is great, the song is great. Most of the 1.0 levels use, like, all the same same object, so they'll get pretty much the same, like, deco rating from me. Polar Geist, oh boy, the introduction of the jump ring, or the jump orb, whatever you want to call it. I think the game files calls it a jump ring, but no one really calls it that anymore, that's okay. Never really have been a fan of this level, or its song. Over the years, I've gained a lot more appreciation for the song, I think it's pretty funky. I appreciate the bass going on in the background. The bass. How did I almost die there? You didn't see that. This little coin right here is a little bit silly with it. Oh man, but you have no idea. The third coin is such bullcrap. See if I can get it first try. Oh, barely. Okay. Also, I don't know what it is about 2.2, but I am playing literal polar geist right now, and I'm getting like 20 frames. I never had these problems in 2.1, Rob Top. I don't know what you did, man. Polar Geist is a good, solid little level. I just don't really have any personal bias that wants to put it up high. I will keep it at B, to be fair, because there's nothing really wrong with it. I just don't really have any strong feelings towards it. Dry Out, on the other hand. <laughs> This song is immaculate. I love it so much. I get that I'm ranking the levels here and not the songs, but gosh darn it, I love this one so much. This is the first Rob Top level that actually used kind of like a dubstep song, I guess. I don't know if I should use the D word. Ugh, that coin's a little scary. See, I almost didn't make it. Yeah, not much else to say about Dryad that hasn't already been said. I love this level so much. This is also like the first level that kind of does a lot with like background pulses and color changes and stuff like that. So I guess you could say the deco is like greater than it's ever been in the game with Dryad. I think where it truly belongs is top of A, but this is my list and I'm gonna let some personal bias kind of seep through the cracks. Crack? Bloodbath reference? Another level I don't really have any personal bias for is base after base. It's a fine level. It's totally cool, but I just feel nothing playing this level. I'm sorry. It is the most forgettable Rob Top level, at least for me. Also, that spike down there is missing. That gets you guys really heated up. Also, I really like this coin. You see this baby right here? He could get this coin. I think that's really funny. It's hard for me to judge these levels as if I'm playing them for the first time because I've been playing these levels for like 10 years. <laughs> this guy could probably also get this coin, which I also find funny. This level's just kind of like diet can't let go. You know, it's not as hard. It's not as interesting. It's just kind of like it's baby's first can't let go. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just kind of forgettable. Also, this level put a triple spike at the end. <laughs> I forgot about that. Base after base. I feel so neutral towards this level. Uh, I don't want to give it a D because that's kind of harsh, but I, it's just kind of like right down the middle. It's totally fine level. It's just kind of whatever. Can't let go is the first level that I feel like I and most of the community first like struggled with when they were playing through the game for the first time. Can't let go I believe is the introduction of the fabled can't let go jump where there's a spike on the ground the spike above your head you gotta jump between them. Gotta thread that needle you know what I'm saying also this corn's down here in it. What does he say there? Does he say freeze or free? Free! Free! This level's free, bro! How'd you die there? It's free! This level, deco-wise, is kind of a disappointment because most of the level's literally black. This ending is a little bit silly. That spike is just... Where are you going? And then this block! Why has the block scooched over? COVID's over. Stop social distancing. <laughs> Can't let go's cool. It's a huge difficulty jump, I feel, from base after base and dry out, which isn't a bad thing. There need to be difficulty jumps somewhere. I think it's funny. It has tremendous meme value to me, and that keeps it above C, but that's about it. 
it's just a neat level. I'll probably also rank these not only from top to bottom, but also left to right. We can do that at the end though. Jumper, another level I struggled with for an embarrassingly long amount of time. This level's probably the first since like back on track where the song actually makes me feel like a sense of happiness and safety, even though the level tries to kill me. Cause you got polar geist that's kind of intense. You got dry out that's really intense. Also that coin is so freaking hard. Bass after bass, rave music, can't let go, also pretty intense. This is just like a nice chill little break song wise. And then you see that coin and then you want to shoot yourself. <laughs> I like Jumper. It's a nice change of pace. It's a happy little level while still being kind of challenging. Probably going to put this bottom of A for right now. We might move that to top of B later. I don't know. Another level I have tremendous personal bias for is Time Machine, because check this out. <laughs> Yeah, you could literally get like 4% on this level by just holding down from the start. <laughs> This level introduces mirror portals, also another one block straight flight coin. Mirror portals are obviously not the most popular mechanic in the game, but this level handles the mirror portal thing pretty well. For me, Time Machine was a big enough skill hurdle to where like I didn't struggle with any of the main levels as much as I did Time Machine for a long time. I freaking love Time Machine. Once again, I think the more fair placement would be top of A, but my personal bias says around the bottom of S tier. I freaking love Time Machine, it's so cool. I honestly want to be just like Time Machine when I grow up. Cycles! In Cycles, we get our first new game mode introduced since Stereo Madness introduced the ship. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a little scary. I guess that's like maybe the first shut up ball timing that the game ever saw, which is kind of funny. Oh, this ship was so hard for so many people when they first started out. If you're 11 years old, haven't played this game until yesterday, and you see that ship part, you're gonna like, your brain is gonna short circuit, dude. This, I believe, is the only Rob Top level that finishes with a ball, which I think is pretty funny. It also finishes with a mirror portal. Cycles is great. Probably put this bottom of A tier. I think the gameplay is awesome. I think the coins are fun to go for. This level has a decent amount of memory in the first cube, which I'm not a huge fan of, but otherwise I think the gameplay is all like pretty unique for the time. Next step, another level I have a lot of personal bias for. I actually do really like the deco in this level and how it depends on your colors. And my colors are awesome, obviously, so the level ends up looking awesome. Isn't that cool? Also, this level gives you as many stars as a demon, which I find funny. Also, this block design, I don't know what it is about it. I think it looks so freaking cool. It's all like copy and pasted, obviously, but who cares? It looks neat. Look how cool this level looks right now. Colors! Coolness. And then the colors fade to different colors once you complete the Oh, it's so cool. X-Step is probably going an S for me. I love it so freaking much. X-Step is so cool. Usually in the debate of what's the most forgettable Rob Top level, it's either like base after base or X-Step. Those are the ones I hear the most. Clutterfunk, another fairly large difficulty spike. Clutterfunk is hilarious. I love the song so much. If Dry Out wasn't dubstep, you bet your ass this is dubstep. Like I've said before, the drop sounds like Megatron and Optimus Prime having a fart battle, which I would honestly pay to see in the theaters. That sounds cool. <laughs> I'm spitting entirely too much to continue, I'm sorry. But you get the point. Transformers fart battle. Dude, Clutterfunk is so much fun. It has so much meme value to me. I think I placed it really low in my first tier list video, like F or D or something. I got some problems with Clutterfunk, especially in the balance department, but I do think it's really fun in my present day skill set. I'm gonna put it probably bottom of A or top of B. What do we say? I'll leave it bottom of A for now. That might drop down to a B later on in the video. We'll see at the end. Theory of Everything. One of the first songs that got like super popular. It's like, oh my gosh, such a beautiful mystery pan now. I love it so much. Hey, GD, would you like to get more than 11 frames per second later? Or is this where you're at for right now? This level introduces the UFO, which I love a lot. I do think UFO gameplay is fairly underrated. Either that or people are just really bad at making good UFO gameplay, so everyone thinks the UFO sucks. <laughs> this level is one of the first that actually dabbles in like the object color changing around a little bit so i guess you could call that some pretty decent deco also this is like one of the only levels that has some of the song play after you complete it which i think is fun theory of everything is great nothing really wrong with it in terms of like meme potential and how funny i think it is it hasn't really aged as well as some others i think it probably deserves to go along with clutter funk and like bottom of a tier wow a tier is getting pretty stacked up electro man adventures i love this level a lot this level is one of the first that i feel actually has like really good deco for the time it'd be super cool to see more extreme demons with deco like this but with like a little bit more of a modern take. I'm gonna go into practice actually because I want to show you guys something. So in this UFO part you can get a little bit silly with it. Check this out. Yeah, what do you guys think about that? This makes Electroman Adventures the second level that you can complete with a mirror portal effect. The first one being Cycles from earlier. I love levels like this, which is like little dumb secrets for you to just like explore around the level and go looking for. It gives a lot of replay value to them, I think. Once again, the song plays for a little while after you complete the level. I think that's cool. Electroman Adventures, probably S tier. It's so freaking cool. I love it. Deco's awesome. Gameplay's awesome. Song is awesome. Cool little secrets. I mean, what more could you ask for? Club Step, First Demon. I think Club Step is super cool. As overused as this level's influence 
influence can be, it's really cool to see how many levels it's influenced so many years later. Soul definitely does not have the most balanced gameplay, but it is really fun and very challenging for the time. I pretty much covered my feelings on this level's gameplay in my uh, club step, but RNG chooses my game mode video. But yeah, this level's fantastic. All the colors changing constantly throughout the level also gives a nice little sense of deco. Yeah, I don't really feel like I need to explain why I like this level so much, it's just good. If you're not really a fan of this level's difficulty, I suggest you get better and try it later because it is super fun. I love it a lot. Electrodynamics is so good. People ask me what's the best Rob Top level, and they ask me what's my favorite. These are two different answers. My favorite we'll get to later. This one might be the best, in my opinion. I think in terms of deco, this level absolutely knocks it out of the park. This level just holds up super well, I think, and the gameplay is super fun, very ship heavy. I think this level is pretty good, even by today's deco standards, at least if you use the right colors. When I first played these ship parts, I thought they were super hard, and they're still pretty tricky, but I think they're just really fun now. I feel like most people have kind of a love hate relationship with most of the Rob Top levels. They start playing them, it's like, ah, this is so hard. Screw you. I hate this part. And then they get older, then they get good, and they're like, yeah, this level's awesome. Electrodynamics, easy S tier, man. S and A tier are really filling up. I'll rework these tiers a little bit later. Maybe give some more love to the B and C tiers. We'll see. Oh, Hexagon Force is so freaking cool. I get that I kind of say that about all of these, but it's true. I don't feel like there's a single song in any one of these levels that kind of has the same energy as this song. That duel is pretty hard, lots of people struggle with that. This level of course introduces slopes, which I use for gameplay a lot, so obviously this level has a lot of value for me in that regard. This duel is pretty hard. This stumped a lot of people, myself included. Like, when I first got there, I was like, okay, well, uh, I guess I'll forever have 63% on Hexagon Force. And then dual ship physics are, like, a little bit tricky, so this part is, like, I don't know, you can call this a bad part if you want, but I kind of like it. Hexagon Force is so good. Easy S. <laughs> Blast processing. I love this level so much. This is my favorite Rob Top level. Block design, the colors, the song, the gameplay. I love these gears that were introduced in this update. And this level introduces Wave, man. I mean, how can you argue with that? This is probably my favorite looking Rob Top level, along with probably Electrodynamics. Not to necessarily say that those are the best decorated Rob Top levels, those are just my favorite. Why do so many people say this coin is hard? It's not. It's boom. I fell off of the thing, click three times, there you go, you're done. If you struggle to get that coin, you probably struggle to unwrap a freaking cheese stick. In my video where I ranked all the coins, I think a lot of people were like, What? What do you mean that one's easy? That one's so hard. Oh, this level's a minute and 44 seconds? Really? I did not know it was that long. Let me save some time. I'm just putting this atop of ST right here. <laughs> this is my favorite level. I would say it's not close, but it kind of is because Electrodynamics, Hexagon Force Club set, they're all so good. Theory of Everything too. A lot of people say this is the hardest Rob Top Demon. I think Deadlock's probably a little bit harder, but again, it kind of just depends on like your ship and wave skill. This level I feel is very ship heavy, whereas Deadlock is very wave heavy. And I'm not really particularly good at either game mode, but I do think Deadlock's a little bit harder. A lot of people also say Club Step is the hardest. I do not get that. This level is so freaking good. The deco, the song, the gameplay. Mm, wow. That coin is hard and scary. This UFO is really fun, I think. Ooh, almost died there. And then your reward for winning is getting eaten by a monster, which I think is funny. <laughs> Toe 2 is fantastic. Probably another contender for the best drop top level, even though it's not my favorite. I did not realize that my personal bias would pave the way for like nine S tiers, but here we are. Geometrical Dominator. I have a lot of mixed feelings on this one. Obviously, this introduces like all the 2.0 features, including Robot, which I think is cool. One feature I don't think is cool is moving gameplay. Moving gameplay is stupid. But yeah, Deco in this level is pretty cool. I'm not a huge fan of like the whole like cartoony Mario cloud rainbow type thing. Not exactly a vibe that I think holds up super well but it still looks nice. This part I've been very harsh on in the past. I think it is like potentially sight readable, but still, if you got here from zero and sight read up until this point, you're basically saying goodbye to your attempt. I think this is cool. Pressing the little, the little buttons to unlock the doors, that's neat. That is a good application of moving gameplay, I think, for sure. Yeah, I have been really harsh on this level in the past, and I have definitely come around to appreciating most of what it has to offer, but any way you slice it, there's still a lot of moving gameplay and a lot of memory compared to the others. Again, if you are making this a memory level, there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't prefer memory gameplay, which is why it'll be ranked a little lower. Once again, great level though. All these are great. Dead locked. I like this level. This level has kind of fallen victim to some overexposure in my mind though. Probably just due to the fact that it's the newest and most relevant Rob Top Demon. But yeah, this level is also very influential, obviously, because it introduced like boss fights, which became like one of my least favorite features in the game. <laughs> also a decent amount of memory in this level, but I don't really mind because you're going to be practicing demon levels a lot anyway. Like making a demon with some memory makes more sense to me than making like a six star with some memory, like Geometrical Dominator. But yeah, otherwise this level's gameplay is really solid. Yeah, this part is entirely memory, not a huge fan, but it does feel pretty cool to pull off, I have to admit. Another shockingly 
long Rob Top level, a minute 44. Deadlocked. I'm afraid this is not an S. This is an A though. Definitely very good, but not quite gonna make the cut to the S tier, I think. Oh boy, finger dash. I'm 99% sure that this is the only Rob Top level that had to have its name changed because it was too gross. Probably the only Rob Top level that had its name changed for any reason. <laughs> if I recall correctly, this level was named after the song, which is Finger Bang, which Rob Top probably said like, ah, actually that's too gross, let's change it. <laughs> which like, yeah, good call Rob Top, thank you. Also notice how the ground is the 3D effect when nothing else does. Cool. This of course introduced the spider game mode, not exactly my favorite because it's kind of a buggy mess of a game mode, but I still like it. Not a huge fan of this coin. I've never been a fan of the, hey, you want this coin? Go on a scavenger hunt and collect 10 smaller coins. It'll be great. I'm going to be pretty harsh here. This is a D tier for me. Again, I like this level, I just don't enjoy it nearly as much as any of the others. Finally here, half of the reason I'm making this video, dash, let's do it. Yeah, this level's awesome. The deco's cool, the gameplay's cool. This part is not funny, please stop pretending that it is. That coin is cool, I like that coin. Geometry dash. Geometry dash. That's so dumb. Oh my gosh. That's the equivalent of me starting every video saying, Howdy, guys. It's Howdy. Welcome to Howdy Video. Howdy. Alright, this coin makes me a little bit mad. Yeah, this little staticky thing right there doesn't have a hitbox. You can phase right through it. I know there's gonna be kids being like, Oh, that's just a skill issue, man. You should have known that that color was different. The hex code was different by like one. I don't know. That's just a dumb coin, in my opinion. Not nearly as dumb as this one, where you just click a bunch and then there's the coin. Like, how is anyone supposed to know that? And then we end this level with like a little back and forthy thing. It's pretty cool. Aside from two out of the three coins being kind of stupid, this level's awesome. Dash is awesome. The first coin is awesome. The other two coins are stupid. Now, all these levels have some pretty incredible meme potential, if you ask me. This level, however, is the only one that I don't think is funny at all. What? Who is calling me? Oh, hi! Hey, we have some chuggle. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, this level's super, super solid, aside from those two coins that I don't like and the song being kind of silly with it. This is probably gonna go in A tier. I might drop it down to a B, but there's just a lot that's done very right in this level, and it's hard for me to ignore that. Oh, the tower. I did not enjoy you whatsoever. Oh, that's not true. I did enjoy it a little bit. I think this first level's super chill, actually. Also, there's not a sound effect every time I click, unlike other platformer levels. Thank you, Robtop. A sound effect every time you press an orb? Sure. I'm fine with that. Who cares? These blue coins are maybe like a little bit too secret, but I don't really care. I mean, it's a platformer level. You can just roam around however you want. You don't need to hop in practice mode and, oh, I missed the thing. I gotta go back and place a checkpoint, you know? So this blue coin's up here, right? And then you drop down here and then there's another blue coin. That one took me forever to find because I did not think in a million years there would be two blue coins that close to each other, but this is Rob Top we're talking about. He likes to be a little silly with it. Uh, and then there's a whole lot of nothing. We step on this button and then this guy who thinks he's cool starts talking to us. And then he uses lasers to chop off our balls and then we're good to go. First tower level is pretty good at what it does, but not much really happens. It'll be like a solid C. That's not to say that this level is just as good as base after base. These are like entirely different criteria that I'm judging these by. But this one's also pretty fun. Lots of silly sound effects though. I tell you what, uh, it definitely slows things down and makes you wait a little bit more. So it's less fun to speed run, but that's okay. So that is where the fun ends because now it is time to do this bullshit. Wait, there was a fire in the hole sound effect, man. Yeah, that's an extra like minus 10 points for this level. I'm going to be honest. You can sight read this like, I guess boss fight if you want to call it. It just was not fun for me whatsoever. I hated this. Oh my gosh. This one I almost want to put an F. My gosh. I had a terrible time with this one, but it's not objectively bad. And the first half is fine, so I'll give it like a D. I just didn't like it. Now, this one I thought was super cool, actually. You shouldn't. Don't care. Bye. Well that skeleton's name is Jeremy Bonesington, because Rattle Dash is stupid. I'm warning you. <laughs> okay, still don't care, but I appreciate it. Yeah, I did enjoy this level a decent amount. I did think it was the most fun to speedrun as well. My power is meaning- what power do I have? Like, immortality, I guess? Because I could just, like, do attempt after attempt. This dialogue is written for the sake of, like, having lore, but there is no lore for Geometry Dash. It's not gonna happen, I'm sorry. Um, this coin is ridiculous. You, like, stomp on this ground and then the spikes- what the hell, man? Like, who's gonna discover that intentionally? Exactly zero people is the answer. This one I had a super fun time with, actually. Not quite an A, but definitely a B. I enjoyed this. Oh boy, this last one. So once again, this first half is fine. We're just hanging out, getting coins, we're living it up. Only balls allowed in here, and we go in anyway because we're rebellious, and then we get trapped because we're stupid, and then we get taken away to be eaten, and then we jump and break free from the freaking Chinese infrastructure. Ah, welcome. Thanks, Jeremy Bonesington. So we're just kind of hanging out in this little facility, working our way up the corporate ladder, and then we get balls canceled. Sir. There we go. And then we play Pac-Man for a little bit, collect all the blue keys, my favorite part of Pac-Man. And that's a fine level, right? And then there's this boss fight that I really, really dislike. 
<laughs> All these sound effects are new to me. I've never heard these before. <laughs> so you can call this boss fight like a... Oh, that's a skill issue, bro. But like, look at this bullshit. See, I already dislike boss fights, and I think this one's pretty darn bad, even for boss fight standards. I'm also not entirely sure, but it seems like the green fireballs are completely random, which makes it really frustrating to kind of position yourself favorably. And that was not even the worst part. This is the worst part, where he starts to rub his face into the ground and like literally chase you and hunt you down. It's so obnoxious. You could try to stay on one side, then run across to the other, and that works sometimes, but sometimes he does his own thing and he chases you either way. Yeah, I do not like the way boss fights are handled in Geometry Dash, and that was a shining example of why I don't like them. This fella, it's not objectively bad, I just really hated it. So, not gonna get an F, probably will get a D. So now before we go, I'm gonna tidy up these tiers a little bit, share a little bit of love in the lower tiers, I feel. I was a little bit too generous with some of these. I'm probably gonna drop Jumper to B tier, as well as Theory of Everything to B tier. I want all of you guys to be in the A tier, but there's just not room. There's just not room in the end. I'll probably drop Dry Out. X step and time machine to the top of A. I'll probably also drop Clutterfunk to the top of B instead of being kind of a low A. Uh, I feel like I should probably drop one of these to a C tier. I think it'll probably be Polar Geist. It's gonna be Polar Geist, me thinks. And then there's nothing in F tier. We need to show some love to the F tier. Man, this is not an easy job that I've given myself. So for the record, none of these deserve F tier, but something has to go in here for the sake of uh, me being happy. And uh, Finger Dash, I'm sorry, but you start with F. You were doomed from the start. And now I'm gonna try to rank everything from left to right. Let's see. So Blast Processing, my favorite, probably followed by Electrodynamics, Hexagon Force, Club Step, Electroman Adventures, Theory of Everything 2. The A tier would probably go a little something like X Step, Time Machine, Dry Out, Deadlocked, Cycles, Stereo Madness, Back on Track, Dash, something like that. B tier would probably go Clutter Funk, Theory of Everything, Jumper, Geometrical Dominator, Can't Let Go, and then The Cellar or whatever that's called. <laughs> this one would definitely go Polar Geist, then Base After Base, then the Tower Level. These two are fine where they are and then finger dash is just hanging out down there finger dash is still a king in my book but we need to fill out all the tiers buddy i'm sorry so here it is the official 2024 how do you rob top level tier list if you disagree with my list that is okay you can tell me in the comments i'd love to hear about it or you can make your own list because i'll leave a link to this in the description but yeah that is gonna do it i really hope you guys enjoyed before we go huge thank you to all of my patrons on patreon and my members on youtube i really appreciate all that you guys do for the channel and i hope that my videos and streams can make your contributions worth it and if you guys enjoyed this tier list styled video and like to see more things like it be sure sure to let me know by leaving a comment. And if you stuck around to the end, I really do appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day or night and goodbye forever.